Namaste and welcome to our channel, Shug Temple. So today is a continuation off of my previous video, which I am discussing how toxic or negative people can actually help us in our personal growth. And I decided to do this video today because I got such great um, feedback and connection off of that video that I thought it would, would be worth to explore this topic with a little bit more depth today. So before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to be alerted when I post the next video. Um, and I also want to remind you, I love and welcome your comments and questions. So please feel free to, to comment or ask any question there as well as your involvement and your um, feedback here gives me the inspiration for my YouTube material. So I, I definitely welcome that and I encourage you. So... To continue with where we were in our last video, talking about um, toxic and negative people, first I want to remind you that there really is no, no way to qualify exactly what a negative or a toxic person is. As I explained in the last video, depending on the relationship dynamic, the exact same person could respond or act or behave entirely different or be perceived totally different um, to someone else. So it's all about the relationship dynamic between you and that person. Now, for today's uh, conversation, I think at the root of this issue of dealing with toxic or negative people, I think that it's very, very helpful to come to realize and to allow and accept people however they are, wherever they are, whoever they are choosing to be, I think it's going, you're going to have a much more peaceful and harmonious relationship is at the forefront. You realize that however somebody is presenting to you, you are going to have to accept them just as they are. Meaning, sometimes we have uh, conscious or unconscious expectations from other people. Maybe we expect them to uh, behave in certain ways. Um, maybe we become emotionally attached to them and so we become disappointed if they don't nourish us or uh, they don't uh, respond in ways that we would prefer. Um, and I, instead, what I think is a, a helpful thing to do is to put some space there in, in a place when you're relating to anyone, put some space there, take a minute, pause, meditate, go for a walk if you notice that someone is triggering you emotionally, and come back to the place of the purpose. What is the purpose of your relationship? Okay, and I think many of us, um, and I think it is kind of romanticized in many of our cultures. I know in American culture, we tend to feel incomplete if we're single, or we tend to fantasize about another person maybe completing us in some way or filling some type of hole um, within us, something that we feel like we are we lack, we expect the other person to fill that void. And I think that while it's admirable to find things in other people that you really appreciate and you enjoy, when you allow yourself to get an expectation of that person to, to fill that gap for you, you're putting yourself in a very dangerous situation and I think that it's helpful and when I say dangerous there's nothing truly quote-unquote dangerous but what I mean is 
You're putting, you're setting yourself up basically to have an imbalanced relationship. Now, one thing I want to plant, I want to plant this seed in your mind and I want you to explore this within yourself and you tell me in the comments if you agree or disagree and why. Um, but I think that people that en are engaged in the most satisfactory relationships are ones that already feel a sense of wholeness and complete, uh, you know, a sense of self-worth and value within themselves individually. And then when they, they tend to attract other people that appreciate who they are being. So when you feel whole and you don't feel lacking and you feel secure, you feel confident in yourself, then when you get with other people, it's just, you want to just enjoy life. It's not that you're trying to take anyone's energy or you have no expectation for them to complete you in any kind of way or to give you some kind of energy. It's more that you want to share just the joy, just the essence of life itself. So I, I think when we can be aware of that and be conscious of that, that um, we have everything that we need within ourselves, and relationships are meant to be enjoyed. Now, of course, I'm not saying that, you know, it, it's just as easy as uh, making that decision and everything is just going to be ba perfectly balanced all the time. But the more that we practice this, this awareness, the more that we pay attention to the things that are triggering us about the other person um, we have to remember that that person is there as our reflection as our mirror and they are giving us an opportunity to refine ourselves so these toxic these heavy people these people that maybe are too emotionally attached to us um, these people that are uh, maybe we talk about energy vampires or we talk about narcissists or something like that I think it's more helpful instead of putting a label on these people is just think of the behavior, how it's making you feel within yourself, and then just putting a little space there. And instead of making it about the other person and what they're doing um, to you, think about what energy do you want to create in your own life? and. This is a wonderful way. We talked a little bit about it in the last video. Boundaries. And the boundaries are not there to manipulate or to control the other person. The boundaries are there to protect your own energy, to give you a sense of safety and security. So whenever you feel something is not right, whenever you feel that someone is triggering you, whenever you feel that someone is being heavy on you, talking to you in ways that you do not want to be uh, talked to, um, you have to take back your power. And so it's a practice. This is a practice. So every time this happens, pay attention to your own body. Your body is going to give you clues to let you know how things are going. When you don't feel right, when you feel kind of different, when you feel low, when people's words are affecting you and making you doubt yourself. These are things that you want to pay attention to. And I'll tell you one um, final thing that is probably the worst thing to do, but probably most of us tend to get into this circular issue. And that is sometimes we want to defend ourselves. So sometimes when this is happening, what happens is then we tend to get ourselves engaged in arguments or we tend to feel the need to explain ourselves why we are right or you know just to defend ourselves when in reality none of that needs to happen at all okay and we i talked about this in the last video because we don't we can't control anyone else's behavior and when we get engaged in this argument and this back and forth and this feeling to explain, really all we're doing is we're creating more of a resistance in that relationship, more of a, di a dynamic of us versus them. And 
So I think that the best thing, and it's very difficult to do this, I'll admit, it's very simple what I'm saying, but it's very difficult to actually um, be conscious enough and set the space there that when someone is tr really triggering us or treating us in a way that we don't like to just disengage at that moment, do what we need to do, whatever meditative practice, whatever that might be, but that really is the best thing to do is to go within yourself, ask yourself, what do I need to keep this relationship in a healthy balance? Okay. Um, so I would love to know your comments um, on this video. If you agree with what I'm telling you now, um, in the last video, many of you shared the issues that you're struggling with. And I encourage you to, uh, to leave that in the comments because a lot of the comments that you're choosing to share there are things that other people are also struggling with and um, it gives me a chance to respond to the to the comment and it also gives me uh, an idea of future videos that I can address that I know that are going to reach um, a group of people so I encourage you to please comment like share the video and um, I would love to, to know also if you have tried any of what I'm suggesting here and what is happening. And finally, I want to leave you. Um, we have a workshop, of, a five-day workshop, and it's for couples, and it's called The Art of Relationship. So if you feel like uh, these videos are great, but you feel like you would like a little bit more one-on-one -on -one support, uh, please feel free to, I have our uh, email is in the description box along with some other videos that you might find helpful. Feel free to reach out and ask questions about the workshop and maybe this would be something that you would like to explore as well. So uh, be sure to click that notification bell when you subscribe and to be alerted when we post the next video. Namaste.